What's going on, everybody? I hope everybody is doing well today. I am here with former candidate for governor of New York, Derek Gibson. Mr. Gibson, how are you today? It's an honor to have you. I am well, doing just fine, working hard, trying to get things done, trying to save this nation. I love it, man. I've been following you for years. I love what you're doing for New York. I appreciate what you've done for for our city and our state. And I and I look forward to seeing what you're able to do in the future. And I, I just want to start. So you ran for the governor of New York in 2022. And I wanted to ask you, what made you decide to participate in this race? Like, why did you decide to join? Well, uh, what happened is that I moved away from New York as a teenager and I came back to New York late on in life. And I saw what was going on in the state of New York, in the city of New York with the high taxes and uh, the governor, Governor Cuomo, saying uh, Republican has no place uh, in that particular state. So I was like, this is the United States of America and we are welcome anywhere we go. So I want to challenge that statement. And although the high taxes we have, we had rather, and the uh, Department of Education, yep. uh, you know, my plans were to get rid of the Department of Education in the state of New York, send it back to the cities and the counties. And I want to uplift law enforcement, let law enforcement do their jobs because I saw where their hand was being tired. I saw how the Democratic Party have destroyed the lovely city and the lovely state of New York. And I was like, I got to put my hat in the ring and do something about it. So that is when I made my mind up to run for the uh, state governorship. Absolutely. I, I completely agree with you. I mean, being a, a long time, being a lifelong New Yorker, seeing the 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 in insane increase in taxes the the exodus out of new york and other blue states like california it, it's evident that there's a major economic issue here and a social issue right. and there's a reason for that that's that's correct it, it, it's terrible and i spoke to several business owners i'm a business owner myself in the automotive field i'm a uaw guy mm -hmm. and how the business owner was being treated all the uh all the taxes that uh had to be paid especially we have a business in new york city i mean it really disgusts me what's happening in the state and i decided to try to do something about that so i went around campaigning talking to people and hearing what the people wanted and i took that and i came up with my platform for the state of new york and today as of today it has got even worse and yep. down here they haven't got any better under the current elected leadership there including the mayor yep. uh, the young lady that hoochie governor cats kathy hoochie that became governor you know she has some terrible policies also yes I always notice i've been a lifelong republican conservative and i always notice when democrats uh lead cities of state how the city go uh completely back goes downhill yep and, and it's rather unfortunate because when we look at the great city of New York being the metropolitan, literally being the metropolitan capital and the cosmopolitan capital of the world, the fact that you're seeing a mass exodus, not even just outside of the five boroughs outside of New York, but the totality of the state goes to show that there is an there are immense social and economic issues and inequities that are faced. I personally, for example, I. I'm on Long Island and the house that we live in right now in a solid middle class neighborhood, you know, not, not an expensive house. We're paying 18 grand a year in taxes. That's that's ludicrous to think like that. That is that is uh, absurd to think you have. Crime that's rising again. One thing that we just saw, unfortunately, is homelessness is the largest it's been in, in quite some time in New York City. And I want to ask you because you're you're you've been going against the grain a lot, and you're a major advocate for a particular movement for Trump in 2024 called Blacks for Trump in 2024. Are you seeing a growing movement in the African American community where sentiment is shifting towards favoring former President Trump and the Republican Party, specifically in New York? Like, what do, what are you seeing from from being down on the ground, seeing all this? Well, I can tell you, uh, yes, Black for Trump is a good movement. I'm not a part of Blacks for Trump, even though I 
socialize with them, I meet up with them. My organization is Niggas for Trump, and I heard a lot of people feeling when I wore that shirt saying Niggas for Trump, but I meant exactly what I said, and I wanted to get the nation's attention because of the way the Justice Department is doing President Donald Trump. I would like as a black man, we, even myself, have faced the same kind of justice system, which is a two-tiered justice system. Yes, of course. Uh, a decade. So like, I want to bring the attention to this particular moment in history where they are dragging a former president that is unheard of. Well, matter of fact, I want you to say a former president. He's still a, uh elected president and they just did a soft coup on him. And I will always say he's the president at this particular time. But uh, yeah, crime is high. I heard you talk about the taxes, how much you're paying taxes. Mm -hmm. That was part of my plan, you know, to uh, read the state of the income tax because we are New York City. Yeah. Really burden on New York State and this is why we need so much taxes because we welcome in tons and tons of illegal aliens and this is nothing new uh this has been going on for a while President Trump was trying to fix that and people may not know but New York uh we are in bankruptcy we never came out of from the first time that we was in bankruptcy it's hidden but people don't know that so we just common sense policies I want to put in play and go for that. And yes, I'm seeing in the black community, I'm concentrating on the hood right now. In the black community, I talked to several black people, young, middle aged people. And yes, they are all 100% for President Trump, but a lot of them are not registered voters. So this is where I'm putting my energy at to get them registered in the hood. This is where I got a criminal record. It was 10 years ago, it was 15 years ago. So you still can get your rights back and you can vote. You can get all your rights back. So they don't know those things. Uh, I have a degree in criminal justice, so I studied those things, and I'm, I'm helping them to steal their records, do whatever they need to do, and register to vote. And yes, the black state community loves President Trump. They I think he lost connection, so we'll wait on that. I think they're trying to, uh, I think we, uh, I think we got a little bit of a connection issue. Let's see what happens. Uh, they're trying to rug the stream because of, uh, uh our view on president donald trump um so but uh we'll see what happens let me just text him and see where he went uh, let me see let me see what happened here let me see what happened here mr gibson mr gibson hello Mr. Gibson, there we go. Here we go. Out. Yeah. Your connect, your connection kind of uh, went in and out. I think you're frozen. Can you guys hear him right now? Just curious, see if anybody can hear him. Give him a few seconds. There we go. Okay. Technical. I'm having technical issues. Oh, it's working now. It's working now. Okay. There we go. So, so yeah, like you were saying. So, for example, like I have a very close friend of mine who is is a city cop, makes about eighty thousand a year. And the income tax that he pays, he walks away with about 57 grand a year, 56. The fact that he's paying 20 percent in in totality of taxes on his income is absurd. I mean, one of the major reasons why the American Revolution occurred was because of a three percent tax on tea. It's, a, it's sad. It is. It's ridiculous. It don't make sense. But like I said, uh, New York is really in the hole, been in the bankruptcy, haven't came out of bankruptcy since the first time. So those are the policies that are coming from higher up from the governor's office, coming from the city itself. Absolutely. And, and, and what I'm seeing in New York is such divide. And, and I want to ask you this question, like, what are your honest expectations in the upcoming race? Like even in the midst of how Trump is being treated, uh, b being indicted, do you think he has a shot to win the presidency? And if so, many people are trying to speculate on who his vice president will be. Who do you think that'll be? 
Well, he definitely has a shot and a huge shot, but you know, they can always try to put the fix in. They just can't do it as good as they did in 2020 with uh, the COVID and the mail imbalance. Which right. Where all the cheating came from most of it. I won't say all up most of it, but there was Dominican machines and, and also the whole total thing was involved. It was involved everywhere. But yeah, he has a great shot at winning if it's a, a free and fair e uh, election. Exactly. And we, and the, are you still there? I just wanted to make sure. I didn't know if you disconnected. Still there? Okay. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I seriously ponder who will be his vice president. Like, I'm thinking maybe Carrie Lake. I'm thinking maybe – I'm thinking Carrie Lake. I, I'm genuinely curious if he may choose RFK to be his running mate. I know that they're from the same state, so they lose the electoral votes. But that would be a very interesting unity ticket. I know Roger Stone, who I've had on this channel before – has said that that may be a very interesting ticket to see. Yeah, who I would like to see personally myself is Congressman Donaldson, Byron Donaldson, which mm -hmm. is from New York. He's now living in Florida. I would love to see that ticket. And I think that would definitely seal the deal if you were to pick uh, Brian Donaldson, a viable a young man that is in Congress now to be a uh, vice president. But I don't think maybe think he don't have enough experience or whatever, but Carly, Lake, you know, she'll be okay. Uh, the other governor, um, uh, oh, I almost said in Montana, the young lady. <laughs> okay. Also, but hopefully he will choose somebody that can bring uh, the other side of the Republican conservatives in to bring out hell of a support so he can override whatever cheating tactics they got going on. I think the biggest fear here, Mr. Gibson, is the factionalism that I see going on in the Republican Party. Like you, one thing I've noticed is the Republican Party right now is is a pretty divided party. You see a lot of people who are for Trump, then you see people who are for DeSantis, and I feel like that could create a major schism going into the next election. A lot of people assumed that Ron DeSantis was not going to run for president, and that Ron DeSantis was going to be Trump's running mate, but now it's kind of evident that that's not going to happen. And Ron DeSantis has basically ruined his reputation in with, with, with Trump supporters. So even his chance of running in 2028, I feel is slim. So what do you think about the factionalism that's going on in this party? But I feel the same way. I should have waited to 2028 because I like the Santos as a governor. Uh, State of Play did a lot of great things, uh, brought common sense policies and practices back to the governor's office there in Florida. But it just wasn't his time. President Trump is a proven leader, and I wanted everybody to get behind President Trump uh, so we can get him over the hurdle. The Santos come around to me at, when he jumped into the presidential race as part of the establishment, which is not good. So that's a bit of taste in my mouth about, uh, about that. Yeah, parts of the Republican Party are very weak. They don't fight uh, back like they should have, like the Democrats do. A basically give them pass. President uh, Biden should have been impeached already. Borders wide. Oh, that's the first time he should have been impeached for. The guy is not protecting this nation. We have terrorists walking through the southern border, and it's just it's sad to see, and it's, it's overwhelming for this country. The taxpayers fitting big, big bills, large bills. Uh, Trying to take care of illegal aliens out of the hotels of field up in New York City. I have a nice hotel with illegal aliens, and we have a uptick in crime. Uh, illegal aliens, of course, NYPD can't say what's the status of a person when they arrest them, but most of them are illegal aliens. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, it's the 13% again. It's not the 13% black Americans doing it. It's basically those darker skinned uh, people that are coming through the border and we're all being grouped in a lump as so-called people of color and they're committing the crime in this nation. One thing I'm noticing is is the the one thing I feel like what's causing an uptick in New York crime is is bail reform. When you don't have a a a focus on in the criminal, you said you have a background in criminal justice, and I feel like there has to be some type of equilibrium between rehabilitation and retribution. And right now, we have teetered so far left to rehabilitation that there is no sense of retribution for the majority of crimes out there that happen in New York. You see 
people shoplifting. You see people doing all of these crimes and then they're, they're out the next day. And you see this in a lot of blue cities. You see this a lot in San Francisco. You see this a lot in New York City. You see this in Philadelphia. Like Philadelphia is very unfortunately known for Kensington Avenue, which is unfortunately very well known for its 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 drug epidemic. So I find bail reform to be a big issue that is that is putting this city at risk for increased crime because of its because of its ability to 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 focus on non retro not a ret no retribution that that's the issue here i think that we're seeing yeah. right and it is and those policies you know coming straight from the democratic party uh bail reform was always said from the beginning when they were saying i was listening to them they were saying well violent uh offenders won't be let out and the first thing you look up this young man let out that was a violent offender and killed this lady in queens not too far from me uh he was a, a product of bail reform mm -hmm. they kept after telling us that it would just be for the non-violent but actually uh in the back room it was for everybody so it's causing chaos in the streets and these people know these criminals know they get arrested they're gonna be let back out in a couple of hours or you even given a death appearance taking it be back on the street committing crime again that's what happened in the city of new york so these things came straight from the dnc uh, as you know when the uh so-called summer love in 2020 uh black Lives matter wound up burning down the entire nation uh government buildings and all and uh some of our congress people was out get up in their face do this do that they had an insurrection in front of the white house when uh president trump was going to the church and nothing was done about those things so I see the hypocrisy uh, is very huge coming from the Democratic Party, but if we we have a constitution, a federal constitution, a state constitution, but it don't override the federal constitution, uh, we have to follow the rule of law. A lot of people don't know what the rule of law is. Our rule of law came from the uh, constitution and it's based off God's law, Mosaic law. And we have to follow that. And when we get off of that road, and then we you see the chaos we are having against our law enforcement officer and everybody else. But it's dangerous even walking down the street in New York City, riding, but you see crime happening every day. People getting pushed in front of the train. So those things have got to be dealt with in a manner where, yes, we got a two tier justice system, but when people are violent, they shouldn't be allowed back out on the street. And these people have records seven, eight, nine, ten times. Yeah. Haven't even went to court and adjudicated those cases, and they're back out on the street. When you it, when you uh, enable people like that, they'll continue to go in the stores. They're gonna steal because they know they can get away with. It. Oh, we're not gonna prosecute if it's under a thousand dollars. I don't care if it's five dollars. If you go in there and steal your ass, you'll be prosecuted. I know people get hungry sometimes. They're gonna steal some bread or apples. My like, yeah, give them a ticket or whatever. Uh, make him pay it later or whatever. But these people are going in there with grocery bag, getting everything out. So item, clothes, everything, which makes absolutely no sense. And the, our leadership is saying it's okay, and they know that. Exactly. So we, we, we there's a realization here that comes in the idea that soft measurements lead to hard crime because of the fact that it's easy to get away with it. And if there's no consequence of action, you'll see the result thereof. And you're seeing this in San Francisco. You're seeing this in Los Angeles. You're seeing this in New York City. You're seeing this in Chicago. You're seeing this in, in Philadelphia. And the one main, main thing that I see that's very, <laughs> that's a commonality in all these cities is they're all run by blue, by blue, by, by, uh, by Democrats. And as a result of that, we're in a very, very, very unfortunate situation where America's cities right now are being overrun by that type of criminality mind state. But I do, I do want to ask you this, Mr. Gibson. I, I, I know you're a very busy man. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I do want to ask you, because I think it was Abraham Lincoln that basically said that America won't get destroyed from the outside. It can only implode from within. And I'm seeing unfortunately a very large cultural economic and social implosion that that's happening very very quickly so in your opinion mr gibson because you know you're a lot you know you're older than me you've been you've been around you, you you've seen different cultures in america and what would it take to unite americans on both sides of the podium 
so that this nation doesn't succumb to cultural and social implosion? Like, is is there a way, or is that a foregone conclusion in your opinion? I'm um, to say it's a foregone conclusion, but I don't want to write anything off. But we must come together. But we can't come together as Democrats and Republicans. We have to come together as Americans. And we cannot take up the destructive evil policies that is coming out of the DMC. That's a no no. So at this point, it's only good versus evil. And I just have faith in God and go for and keep pushing, keep fighting, and get rid of this tyrannical government uh, that is going on in all these different states and, in a, and on the federal level also. But I don't give up. I haven't gave up. But it's looking, it's looking bad to a lot of people in the eyes of a lot of people that I speak to on the basis that. About so we are, they smell civil war and they think that's the only way to uh, go back to where it's supposed to be. So hopefully that won't happen, but uh, I'm basically on that same page. Absolutely. I think what's happening here, unfortunately, is that we have a lot of draconian policies that are meant to divide. They're meant to create division on, on unfortunately, both the left and the right. I mean, you have on the right, too, you have many rhino Republicans. You have the uni party right now that is interconnected with the DNC. This is not just a, a Democratic thing. You have a lot of rhinos in, in the Republican Party that are very much advocates for anti-American, anti-Americanism. You have a lot of 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 politicians on both sides of the podium that right now that are playing this divide and conquer mentality for for what I would presume is globalism over nationalism. And I think that's a major issue in the West right now. You're seeing that in the West, you're seeing that in Europe, you're seeing that in America, you're seeing that in Canada. So I think there's this there's this cultural tug of war between nationalism and globalism especially with what you're saying with Agenda 2030 or whatever that's called. So all I want to say, Mr. Gibson, is a fellow New Yorker, and I've been I've been following you on both Facebook and and um and and Twitter for years. I've been, I was on Facebook and I followed you as well before I got off of Facebook. I've been following you on Twitter for for God knows how long. And I know that, you know, as a fellow New Yorker, I appreciate what you're doing, and I also appreciate you you going into these these rough communities and and educating that it's not black versus white. It's it never it, it never has been. It's not a it's not a race war. It's about race unity. It's about uniting blacks and whites under one banner of freedom, one banner of hope, and one banner of 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 constitutional truth. So I have to salute you for what you're doing. Well, thank you, but you know that's the communist tactic. You divide and then you conquer. Yep. And these people are playing the race card, and but the people have to remove the scales from their eyes. What's really happening in America for our children, our children, children. I can't. I can't hear you, Mister Gibson. I'm sorry. Can you just say that again? That's is a very scary time we're living in. A time is moving. Fight for I, I agree with you. I, I'm, there you go. I, I, I agree with you. I think I think it was Ronald Reagan that said that. Um, it was Ronald Reagan that said, if fascism was ever to come to America, it'd come in the name of leftism. And I think Winston Churchill said this as well. He said the fascists of the future will come to America as anti-fascists, or come just come in general as anti-fascists. Well, you see, it is here. It is where it's coming from and then they'll take the dnc or push it on the other side like the book ban and thing that uh, was going on and now yep. we're getting the, uh, the uh books out of school that shouldn't be in there oh y'all want to ban books oh it's i see it. it's correct and say crazy and pathetic that party is totally evil i can't support nobody in there There's no good or bad in that party all of them is standing there on the I'm losing you, Mr. Gibson. I'm sorry. You there? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, great. Yeah, so I was, like I said, that's a hope. You know, it comes to fruit in the area. And keep it. That's why. 
I absolutely agree. I think right now what we're seeing right now is a very um, – is a cultural battleground between freedom and totalitarianism. So all I want to say is, Mr. Gibson, I don't want to take up too much of your time, and all I want to say to you wholeheartedly is thank you so much for your time, guys. If you If you resonate with what's being said in this stream right now, please consider following Mr. Gibson on Twitter. I have his link in the description of the video. Um, I have his his Twitter handle as well. So please make sure to follow him. And Mr. Gibson, I'd love to have you on again. I appreciate what you're doing as a fellow New Yorker. Um, and just keep fighting the good fight, man. I know it's not easy, but thank you for all that you do. I'll be honored to come back. Thank you and have a blessed evening. Yes, you too. Thank you very much, Mr. Gibson. Have a great day. Absolutely.